Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is healthy and safe. 2020, you guys, has been one of the wildest years. Anything that you can think of, it has probably already happened in the first six months of 2020. And one of the biggest hit industries has been travel. And for all of us, avid travel at heart, we have been crushed. Our trips have been canceled. They have been postponed. We're just stuck. We're just stuck and we don't know when we're ever going to leave. So because we are itching so much inside to get traveling outside of our country, outside of our states, outside of our counties, I decided to do my due diligence and do tons of research and see what the current status is for foreign and international tourism in countries around the world. Disclaimer, this video might be a little bit long, so go ahead and grab a drink grab a snack I got my drink if you want to take notes go ahead and do that because I have four pages of notes to go over lots of information good stuff some really juicy stuff too like some countries I'm not playing with you guys so let's get ready So the first country I'm gonna chat about is Mexico. Mexico is currently in a phased reopening and by phased reopening, they mean by state and by region within the country of Mexico. For example, the reopening status in Baja, California, sir. Some hotels and restaurants have reopened as of the 16th of June, but they are only functioning at a 30% capacity. What this tells you is that they maybe having lower prices or higher prices on hotels and the restaurants may also be taking really, really, really long waits or just reservations in general. In another area in Quintana Roo, which is super popular, that's Tulum, Cancun, and Playa del Carmen, they are currently somewhere in between. From what I could find, they are currently in a reopening status between the 10th and 15th of June with some random hotels opening. That didn't really tell me too much. I didn't see anything about entertainment or retail or beaches, but somewhere in between the 10th and 15th of June. Meanwhile, unfortunately, some regions of Mexico don't have any plan at all. They are still going through it, unfortunately, and they're still suffering from the coronavirus and transmission rates that are going up. So they have no current reopening plan to tourists. The Mexican government was quoted saying that they are down an average of 2.8 million tourists from last year. So I am assuming the second that they can open their economy back up, they will be welcoming everybody with open arms because that is a huge chunk of their economy. The next location, Aruba. Aruba has luckily had a confirmed 100 cases. Who knows if that number is up or down? So that's actually pretty decent compared to most countries. Although malls, beauty salons, and outdoor food opened on May 25th, they are still not completely open to international tourism. They are looking somewhere around July 1st. And when you arrive, they're definitely gonna be implementing temperature checks at the airport upon your arrival. So definitely get used to that. And also be mindful that they will probably still currently have a curfew from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. And that means all restaurants, all essential businesses, all non-essential businesses close at 10 p.m. All right, next location, super popular, Bali. Listen, according to booking.com, Bali is the second most wished list location in the world. Everyone's like, I'd like to go here. So let's talk about when you can go there. Bali's government was quoted saying that the risk of transmission is still lingering, but they understand that if there is no tourism, there is no money for a lot of their locals. So they are really pushing to open their economy by October. And I know that is really upsetting for people who are looking to go somewhere throughout maybe their summer months in their country, but October is the best bet right now. And although they had less than 350 confirmed cases, it looks like they're looking to create some kind of tourism clusters so when you were to arrive, there would only be certain hotels open in areas where they can kind of confine to help keep people away from the locals. And this will most likely be in isolated areas. Our next country is France. In 2019, France was the most visited country in the world. Like that is insane. And right now, all non-essential travel is heavily restricted, with the exception of EU citizens and arrivals from the UK, but they are still subject to a 14-day quarantine, and that is looking to expire on July 24th. Hotels, bars, and cafes reopened on June 2nd, and the Louvre will be opening on July 6th, 
as we know, the home to the famous Mona Lisa. The Prime Minister was quoted saying that tourism is one of the crown jewels of France's economy, so I'm sure the second that it's safe enough, they will welcome you with open arms. Next up is beautiful Greece. I'm sad because I had to cancel my trip there. I turned 30 a week ago and I was supposed to be there in Mykonos living my best life on the beach in a crowded beach bar but the Greek government has said no ma'am. There are no crowded beach bars. <laughs> They are looking to reopen the tourism economy on July 1st, but until that date, everyone that is arriving to the country will be subject to a 14-day quarantine. They also will be taking a more in-depth look at those who are arriving from high infection countries, such as the US and the UK, and they will be making decisions whether or not that person has to quarantine for 14 days and also will be tested as they arrive. All arrivals, regardless of where you're coming from, you will be subject to a random screening. Not exactly sure if that is a test, a temperature check, but just be mindful that you might have a random screening. With tourism being 20% of Greek's economy, Greece had about 3,000 cases, which is pretty impressive, and their government was quoted saying that they really took it seriously in the very beginning, like earlier in the stage when they found out about coronavirus, and they shut the city down. They shut the countries down, they shut the islands down. So now they are able to jump back in the game, come July 1st, will I be there? I guess we'll see. Now we're on to Iceland, the land of fire and ice. They only suffered about 2,000 cases, which I think is pretty impressive for the country, and they opened on June 15th. Upon arrival, you will be required to take a test, which is, as for now, is free, but will cost you $112 after July 1st. You either have to take a test or have proof of a previous negative test. The Icelandic government would like to let all the tourists know that they have mechanisms and protocols in place to keep everyone safe as possible. They also have a contact tracing app that they are really encouraging everyone to download and to keep track of who is coming in the country and where they are going. Our next country is Spain. So as of June 21st, all citizens within the EU are allowed to travel to Spain. After July 1st, they will release a list of countries that also will be allowed to enter outside of the EU. These masks are currently required for everyone who is six years old and up, and that includes indoor and outdoor public spaces. The beaches are open with social distancing, and hotels and bars can operate at 50% capacity, tours of 30 people, certain activities with less than 50 people inside and 200 people outside. Getting back to our island vibes, our next country is St. Lucia. They began their phased reopening on June 4th and upon arrival you will be subject to a temperature check. You also must present proof of a negative COVID test within 48 hours of your departure. Mask and social distancing is highly encouraged and a phase two will start August 1st. Next up, a super popular tourist destination, Thailand. Last year in 2019, they had 40 million tourists visit that wonderful country. And they had about 3,000 confirmed cases of COVID. The Thai government is taking it very seriously and they are looking to open for international and foreign tourism in the fourth quarter of the year. Currently, there is a ban on international flights till at least June 30th and that is subject to change. The government is currently toying with the idea of doing a long-term stay application and that will be approved on a case-by-case -case basis, also starting in the fourth quarter quarter of the year. All right, we are moving on to the good old United States. You guys, we got a lot going on right now. I don't know if you want to come here just yet. You know, we're trying to work some stuff out amongst each other. We have some things that we need to deal with. <laughs> but regardless, as of June 15th, there are restrictions on travel and arrival into the United States from a list of countries, including the UK, Greece, China, Brazil. There is a long list of those. Please check cdc.gov for that full list of countries. Even though some states are easing restrictions on opening their states, anyone who arrives is recommended to do a 14-day self-isolation quarantine. I definitely want to just go over some states, some of the most popular areas. I wanted to start with DC because that's where I am at. I will have to say that back in March, it was a little scary. Um, it felt apocalyptic for a bit. It was like, do we buy the whole grocery store? Like, do we spend a thousand dollars? Like, how much food do we need? I started growing vegetables in the back. I was like, who knows? Like, the supply chain, like, it was just 
so uncertain, really scary. Unfortunately, we've suffered a lot of deaths. But right now, June, I don't know if it's the weather or people are bored, but states have definitely, regardless of infection rates going up, are starting to reopen their businesses. DC as a whole is in phase two, which means mostly our restaurants are outdoor seating. Some retail has opened, like very minimal. I'm still waiting on you, Marshalls. Not open yet, but it still has an eerie feeling. It still doesn't feel like normal. I don't think we'll ever truly get back to normal, but at least things like Panera and Cozy and those places that were fast casual are reopening. Also recreational areas like parks and golf courses, things like that have reopened. Masks just required in the grocery store even at the outdoor dining um inside like it's just masks are it are people wearing them hopefully hopefully we will be entering into phase three soon enough maybe by the end of the summer hair salons things like that reopening nail salons but for right now it is just mostly good old outdoor stuff and a couple of gyms let's talk about california so they just said hey guys May 25th, we're opening it up. Retail, zoos, bowling alleys, bars, restaurants, and opening soon will be tattoo parlors, nail salons, personal care type things. Good old New York. It seemed like New York was like all eyes for a long time because that was one of the hot spots that was the epicenter of the coronavirus cases. Thankfully, they have an awesome governor and he was like on TV every darn day, saw him more than others more than others. But outdoor and recreation is opening, some of the beaches are open, bars and restaurants, outdoor seating and indoor seating at 50% capacity, personal care is open, and employees, all employees, must wear masks. I have a couple friends in New York, several friends actually, and I've seen their Insta stories and it looks like, it looks like y'all is, y'all open, so. New York is open. <laughs> Moving on to Arizona. Like I've seen some Snapchats from Arizona. Like Arizona's like popping. Like there's like pool parties and like casino Las Vegas vibes. Like the clubs, the bars, the outdoor. Like apparently Arizona just is on the come up and I didn't know that but Y'all need to look into it because Arizona's popping. As of June 15th, they got retail, personal care, which is like nail shops, tattoo parlors, food, drink, outdoor rack, open, open. Arizona's open. Good old Florida, you know, I couldn't leave that out. Also a place that was a little iffy when it came to reopening. We were like, are you guys sure you guys should be there? But regardless, Beaches, bars, restaurants, personal care, open at 50% capacity. Masks are highly recommended, especially when sitting inside in a public place where social distancing cannot be happening. Okay, if you have made it to this part of the video, I have a treat for you. Let's talk about Cambodia. They are not playing any games with us foreign international tourists, like not any games. Get this, as of June 16th upon arrival, you'll be required to have a $3,000, 3000 $3,000 deposit. And I'm gonna let you know what that $3,000 is about to do for you. Upon arrival, all passengers on an aeroplane will be required to take a COVID test. That will be $30. Thank you, I'll take that. Oh, how are you gonna get the test? $5, please, I will take that. That is for your transport from the airport to the testing facility. Upon taking your test, you have to wait for the results. So, oh, overnight stay, $30, I will take that. And that will also cover three meals. Once your test comes back and you're negative, yay! You have to go to your accommodation, wherever you choose, whatever you are paying for, hotel, resort, Airbnb. You will need to self-isolate for 14 days. So, have fun. Wait, there's more. In the event that there is a positive traveler on the plane, that aeroplane that I described earlier, that you arrived on, if there is one positive test, you're in for a treat. Your entire flight is quarantined in a government approved accommodation for 14 days. And that will cost you just a cool, casual $1,176 to cover your laundry, your meals, your sanitation services. And ooh, I'll take that $100 for another test for you. And what if you're the person on the plane who comes back positive? Hmm? 
What if you are? In the unfortunate circumstance that you test positive for COVID-19 in Cambodia, I will take from you $3,150 for your treatment at one of their specific hospitals. They will be administering four COVID tests at $100 each, so I'll take that 400, thanks. But wait, upon your arrival, you had to have proof of insurance, medical insurance, $50,000 coverage. And in the even more unfortunate circumstance of you passing away from COVID-19, there will be a $1,500 charge for cremation services. Oh man. Listen, I respect it. If you're coming into the country, you're putting their citizens at risk. They're not playing any games. So choose wisely if you're thinking of having a Cambodian vacation. That's it, guys. That is it. If there are other countries that you are curious about, go ahead and comment them down below. I'll do a little research for you, come back with an answer. If you're in any of the countries or states that I mentioned and you're like, oh wait sis, there's another thing that you need to know, please. Spill the tea down in the comments down below. I know we are all itching to go out and get out and be around our friends and be around our family. Trust me, I miss them all too, but please make sure that we are doing it responsibly. We are very still much in the middle, in the midst of a global pandemic and we have to keep each other safe. Vacations can wait. Life, you want to, you want to have vacations because you're alive. So keep that in mind. I hope this video was informational and helpful to you guys. It is nice to be back behind a camera. It's been a minute. And if you have no idea who I am, I'm Kelly. Thanks for coming. Join the McMafia. Hit subscribe. I will see you guys in my next video. And I'm not even going to promise when it's going to be because I just don't know. It's 2020.